Hi and welcome to Tabletop Gaming, the home of cool things like this. Look, this is a monthly magazine that you can get in print and digital. I'll pop links in the description because you're totally going to want to check that out. But for today, it is also the home of this, which is the Umbrella Academy, the board game. We're going to take a first look, we're going to see what's inside, and I am so excited. Now, you may know Umbrella Academy from a couple of things. Originally, of course, it was the comics, and then it is a very successful Netflix series, of which season three is coming soon. And what we have here is its first foray into the board game sphere. I believe there's a card game, but now we have a board game from Mantic. Now, as a board game, it's for ages 13 and over. It's for one to five players and will take about an hour to play. Now, one thing I should make clear, as I always will when we have games of this nature, is that this is a prototype. There may be some things that change, I'm aware that the board is going to look slightly different just in terms of colorization um, and these are not final copies so what you get at retail will be slightly different but this is ahead of its crowdfunding journey so do check out GameFound where if it's not already there it will be shortly and I will pop a link in the description for you too. So we begin first of all with the instructions these are quite nice and short to be honest we've got a lot of that really beautiful artwork that just really catches your attention. Um, now I'm not afraid to tell you that I very first got into Umbrella Academy solely because it's by Jared Way who was in My Chemical Romance and that was my childhood with My Chemical Romance um, but there is so much more to it than simply the name on the front. This is a really really interesting story and seems to have been brought to life quite nicely by what we can see in here and without being too complicated because you all know if you've seen my videos before how I feel about complicated games. Now, we have a fair few tokens that are available to us. We've got that umbrella symbol on the back too. These are presumably power-ups of some description. And we've got more tokens for specific characters and possibly power-ups as well. Now, once you get the rest out of the box, if you're not familiar with the story of Umbrella Academy, it's quite a fun one, to be honest. It's got all the fun quirkiness of a comic book that previously was quite difficult to capture in other media. Now, on a random day in some random year, 43 women became pregnant and gave birth on the same day, none of them being pregnant before. Each of those that were born had some form of impressive powers of some description that made them into almost our comic book heroes that we're aware of. Um, and the Umbrella Academy sort of gathered them together. We had a couple of them that were raised as a family and their powers utilised for, in theory, good. I'll just show you how the board looks from this point. Um, so we've gone all the way up to the moon, which you'll recognise. We've got the general hospital, we've got the city, we've got the mansion, and we've got downtown as well. Now, one of the big points of this story is that obviously when you bring people together, and tell them their family and force them to work together you sometimes get friction um, and the politics of sort of even working with your siblings um, or living with your siblings half the time let's be honest um, is a tricky one and the complexities that occur between the characters is just as important as preventing the apocalypse which is the ultimate end goal here now we have some of those characters here I will do a little bit better of a close-up but just to show you sort of what inserts you're looking at you've got trays here at the bottom which will fit the tokens that you're going to punch out we've got two sets of cards and another one at the bottom actually sorry three sets of cards take a look at those in a moment and these are rather cool miniatures as well and finally a single die too now, the nice thing about this game is that it does play into those themes. This feels like it's made by people who are fans of the comic book and know it well enough to do justice to it. They know what's important about it because it's also easy to go, right, let's make a superhero game. And that's not what the intricacies of the Umbrella Academy are. Look who we've got here. However, nicely, it still feels approachable for people that don't know the Umbrella Academy. And I think that's important, that this can also be your way into knowing the Umbrella Academy. You can enjoy it as a game, you haven't got to love it. Um, the one that really struck me was when Mantic did a Hellboy board game, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And that is coming from someone who had, I think, maybe seen Hellboy once many years ago. And that was the extent of my knowledge. Something like this is incredibly exciting, but I know from their previous games that you can play this without needing to know it. And everything too is well explained. So it's clear what's happening, what the powers are of each of them, what the irritations are, the passive aggressiveness between them, the things that are going wrong, and what you're going to need to do to end the apocalypse, because ultimately, you know, that's 
that's what we've got to try and do here. Now, we've got a big old stack of cards that we can use to propel the game forward. So when we overturn one such as this, so we have Confusion, which is a hazard, choose a hero and move them to a random location. If it is the finale, devastate that location. We have things like Missile Strike, which is again a hazard. Destroy an advantage at this location. If not possible, reveal the top five cards of the main deck and destroy all ad revealed advantage cards. Then of course, more worrying cards like Wound. This card cannot be discarded or played unless via another card or board ability. If you cannot draw cards in the card draw phase, you lose the game. Let's take a dive into the second set of cards. They look to be relatively similar, although perhaps a little bit darker. And um, we've got a lot more Wound cards. But we also start seeing Villain cards. So we have Haze who is a villain um, so whenever Hazel enters a location with a hero that hero gains two wounds but instead of destroying Hazel you can instead flip this card and move Hazel to cha -Cha's location so there's a lot of if this happens this could happen and what are you going to do next however you can also flip this card as mentioned so Hazel is now wounded there is more to do and different features across the bottom that you're going to have to consider in your own actions we've got of course the aforementioned cha-cha and they're wounded and standard size and whilst there are super villain cards I'm not going to share those with you because it does spoil the series a little bit if you want to watch it however you'll be very excited to see who's in this one as you go through and realize what's going on now just for a little more flavor from this deck i will show you we have our skills for our characters so a rumor we have white lie as a skill which is place a hazard at your location on the top of the main deck face down and one thing i haven't shown you is actually the back of these cards also has that logo on that it's so nice to see and then just so many wounded cards. Now for my last trick, I think these cards are very similar, sort of more of the same, but let's take a look and see. So again, we start with some of those rumor cards. A rumor is a strike, this is a skill card, sorry, I should say. Um, we've got quick thinking skills. We've got space boys, so his improvisation skill. Choose a player, they must discard their hand, then draw cards equal to the number of cards discarded. Oh, here we go, and we've got number five. So a minor correction skill, choose a player. That player may draw a card of their choice from the discard pile. So again, like I say, if, you've, if you're familiar with the series, you'll recognize these characters. If not, they're just characters in a game. And some of these cards look pretty powerful. Now, having had a quick through, there are two more types of cards, so I'll show you those quickly. We have weapon cards that offer, in this case, an advantage. And then we have feud cards, which cover multiple characters, as you'd kind of expect. Feud with Bracken, feud with number five, feud with Seance. But alternatively, we then have ally cards. So it's a real mix. There's a lot you've got going on, but in like a really clear way, it seems quite straightforward to pick up. The cards are very self-explanatory. I know what I'm getting from each of them. It's gonna be some sort of hand management to make sure that I'm putting the right things in the right place and hopefully drawing ones that aren't too panic inducing. Although, of course, the more panic inducing, quite often the more fun the game. So you know the balance we have to have here. Now, although in a first look we don't look at how to play, it's quite a simple logic. You go through four phases, which are the play, the draw, the effect, and the crisis phases. And I feel like I'm in a petrol state of the latter one in real life, but hey! Now, nicely, the game does also contain a solo mode, so I'm gonna get stuck into this today, I think, because I'm very excited about it. You may be able to tell. But if you want to bag your own copy, you should head over to GameFound. Again, if it's not there by the time you're watching this, it will be very shortly, so I'll pop a link in the description for you to check it out. I would also love to hear your comments as to what you think of Umbrella Academy if you're looking forward to this, because it gives me a chance both to talk about Umbrella Academy and games in the comments, and that will make me very happy. As always, thank you so much for joining me for this first look. I hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.